User in your channel started All recording. All right, welcome to Spatry's Cup of Licks. I have a panel of guests on my show today. Uh, we're on TeamSpeak, and we are going to discuss wine. Wine is not an emulator. No, it's a compatibility layer that allows you to run your favorite Windows apps and games natively in Linux. Now, uh, I have used Wine over the years um, when I was testing di different Linux distributions and that sort of thing, and I wasn't ever able to get any of my applications working until recently. I'm using the latest version of Wine now, and I'm using Vineyard as the front end for it. Now, I'm the only one on, my, on this panel here that is actually using Vineyard exclusively. Uh, we have uh, we have Andy here. We have Loader, uh, Lixer, and Pingcasts. And uh, we're all going to uh, share our views on wine. And I'd like to go ahead and uh, start with Lixer. You indicated that you're using uh, Play on Linux as a front end. Please tell me a little bit about your experiences with that. Uh, my experiences with uh, Plan Linux. Well, Plan Linux, if you don't know what it actually is, it's a, a front end for Wine, and it allows you pretty much to install software uh, easily. It's uh, through through Plan Linux, so it kind of has its own repository, almost like where it has these Windows applications where you can download, or you could go download the internet or the application from the internet and run it through Play on Linux, install it via that way. And uh, Mike's is with it. It's actually a fairly decent um, uh, front end for Wine. It's pretty simple. You can just go ahead and download it. It's for Debian, Arch Linux, and all that goodness. Anybody else have some experience with Play on Linux? I've installed it a few times. Uh, I've been tempted to try and get uh, Microsoft Office working Linux, but I just haven't gotten around to it. I've just been using LibreOffice. Yeah, and why would you really want to run, you know, uh, run Microsoft Office when you can actually get the the same job done in LibreOffice? But the problem is, though, that I've had when uh, comprising a document in LibreOffice and saving it to Doc, what it does is it messes up with some of the text formatting and that sort of thing. And that could be critical in terms of timing when you need to have uh, documents formatted a certain way to share with fellow co-workers and that sort of thing. So having uh, the Microsoft Office suite running natively on your Linux system at home would definitely be advantageous. Yeah. I think there might have been, I haven't checked the Wine database in a while, but there might be one or two off-the-wall things that don't work that uh, that your average Joe would never ever use if you're running on Wine. Now, the thing that I've experienced with Play on Linux is, you know, for instance, let's say you want to download the latest, you know, you want to download, a, well, not download, but install a game like Dragon Age Origins, which was one of my favorite games that I played before switching to uh, Linux. Now, um, what it wants to do is it downloads all the dependencies such as DirectX, all the video codecs and that sort of thing, but it wants to put it all in its own wine bottle. Whereas with the Vineyard front end, I'm able to load all these things in and I can have multiple programs running within one bottle. Now it is my understanding though with Play on Linux you can do that as well, but it, usually when you install a game, if you're not paying close attention, it wants to install it in its own bottle, thereby you know, you're actually using more drive drive space, and I'm one of these freaks that likes to keep everything consolidated. Uh, I also know Play on Linux since you have multiple versions of Wine. Does Vineyard do that too? Uh, not that I'm aware of. I'm actually using the latest version of Wine for everything. Well, some stuff might work better, like uh, Combat Arms might not work the best with uh, the latest version of Wine, but I think there was one um, version it worked decently with, so if you had Wine to uh, try and get that to work with Wine, I hear it's a real pain in the ass to get it to work with Wine, but it uh, might be doable. And that's the thing with Wine, it kind of varies. Like with development, sometimes it'll work with something, and then the next update, it'll just stop working with it. So, you know, it's kind of, it changes. But, you know, 
it's kind of how it is. Now, in the updates, though, I and that's a regression that you're speaking of. And uh, I have noticed a few times that there were some minor regressions. For instance, I'd get an update to Wine, and then uh, I use um, Adobe Audition for editing audio sometimes. And I would notice that in the next update uh, that it wouldn't work. But the nice thing is, though, when, sh when you notice this, all you have to do is... Uh, go on the launch pad and explain what has happened, and this actually helps the wine developers so that they can get that working again, and that sort of thing before the next uh, before the next uh, stable release comes out. It's a great way of giving something back to the community. Yeah, and I think it's needed, and that's how wine keeps up its development. And they can't exactly do it by themselves; they kind of need people. To come in and tell them what's not working. Exactly. Now, uh, with applications, though, I really haven't had much issues. My applications have been running great uh, with every release. And the nice thing about Wine is you get a new version every two weeks if you've got the latest PPA installed. But let me put a rabbit in everybody's ear in case you weren't aware of this. Uh, how many of you are familiar with Sadiga? Uh, I am. Wasn't it once a, a commercial version of Wine? Absolutely. I've actually um, heard of Sadiga, but um, I heard that 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 every as far as I'm understanding, uh, Patrick, is that I've heard that um that is the that it is it, it is the uh, mo the most supporting um. Thing for for out there for Linux users, especially for um, especially for um, uh, Windows gamers that want to to play their Windows games on their Linux machines. Now here's the little rabbit that I'm going to put in your ear. This little surprise for those of you who are not aware of this, you can go on Trans Gaming's website and sign up, and you can now get that technology free and it allows you to run multiple versions of its engine to get your games running and uh, what I'm planning on doing sometime in the near future is actually running a tutorial series on it and trying to get some games working with it so uh, all you have to do is go on the site now uh, for those of you uh, uh, I'm going to have that link in the show notes below so that you can visit the site, sign up for it, and download it. And then uh, at a later time, I'm going to go ahead and put together a tutorial series on it so that you can get your games running. Because this is specifically for gaming. And there's also another actual uh, wine pro uh, program. Uh, you probably all have heard of uh, Crossover, I'm pretty sure, and that's... Not, not, I won't say it's as well, but it's pretty similar. I actually purchased that package, and uh, and my subscription's about to run out, and I'm going to uh, support it again. And believe it or not, I'm not really even using it, because uh, that is Code Weavers who developed that package, and the ones that are actually providing code to the Wine project. And because of that, that's the reason why I'm supporting it. I have those software packages, but really, Vineyard is doing such a wonderful job for me that I haven't really had need to use them because I've had better results using Wine over the crossover packages using the Vineyard front end. You can't deny that they're attributing to the Wine project, which is nice, you know, to see that there's a commercial company out there trying to help. Yeah, it's really it's really amazing. Now, uh, earlier before we started recording, some of you mentioned, and, and this is one of the little caveats that I have. For instance, uh, one of my favorite games of all time is Microsoft Freelancer, and I have that running natively in Linux. And uh, I have that running at 1024 by 768 resolution. When I close that game out, my screen stays at that screen resolution. And I heard some of you mention that you had that issue as well. Uh, yes, I've had that issue, especially with uh, some other games. Uh, I can't name them off the top of my head, but you know, you'll play the game 
and what will happen is when you exit out of it, the whole screen stays at that resolution, so it's not, the resolution is just all blurred up, not good. Oh, I actually uh, recently learned how to use xrandr, which is a command line utility for adjusting your uh, your resolution, so I've done some shell scripting to, you know, fix that. You can uh, control your resolution, which one's primary, uh, for your monitors, which one's primary, which one's not, you know, which ones are on and off. It's a pretty neat little thing to ha uh, know how to use. Oh, now, yes. yes. Go ahead, Luxor. Well, actually, I've actually I've used that program. I've heard of it, and, uh, you know, for a command line. Now, I have a, uh icon up in my panel that lets me access other things where I can do that, but that's a great command line tool. And I also have a uh, I also have a monitor control tool as well, uh, because uh, you know obviously I want to be able to quick change my screen resolutions. But have any of you now, uh, Pincast? You indicated that you have a shell script. Now is that your workaround for when uh, you exit the game and your screen resolutions change, or have any of you else come out uh, come out with a workaround for that? I actually haven't used it as a workaround. I use it for uh, when I log into OpenBox, so it sets up my uh, dual monitors. I could try it with uh, with uh, a game like Urban Terra. I'm fairly confident it would work. Well, uh, Spatsy, what I do, then, um, instead of me playing my game in full screen, since I have uh, two uh, dual monitors that I use for my Linux, my Linux OS, I um I run uh, most of my games in a uh, window, just standard standard res uh, standard resolution in, in a uh, window, and that's how I run all my games because my I know as long as I keep that game in in that little window, my resolution stays as I left it. Yeah, actually, that's the good. The thing I do is if I want full screen, but I don't actually want to officially have it take up everything is I'll make the resolution really high so it takes up all of my screen but it doesn't like go over my panel or anything it's still in the window so I can have that full screen ability without actually screwing up my resolution so there are a few feasible workarounds now how many of you are using compass uh, me I'm using compass uh, does Cairo compositing manager count I think comp do you mean like the window manager compass or just like uh, effects Compass as the window manager. Okay, I'm not using that at the moment. Now, that one is kind of tricky. I have a few games that I can run full screen and not have to shut down Compass without any uh, problems. But uh, I have uh, I have a few other games that I run. that I phys If I don't shut off Compass, what will happen is when I ex exit the game, I, ac I, I will actually crash the X server and have to hit... Control Alt Backspace to kill the server and log back in. Have any of you had those issues? Uh, no, but I've actually had my own experiences with uh, Compiz kind of acting funny, uh, especially with my Windows. When I'm whenever I'm running a uh, a Windows application through Wine and I use my mouse to click on the window, sometimes my mouse will get stuck on that window with, and I'm not even holding down my left click at all, and it gets stuck on there. I've had I've had instances where that happened uh, to me as well, and uh, there are you know there 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 are so many little tweaks and that sort of thing you have to really go through, and that I guess that's where that comes to an advantage of having several different wine bottles, because you can give individual control to each one, such as you know allowing or denying it to capture the mouse, for instance. Yeah, that's. Pretty helpful, and you know, sometimes that can be a pain, and sometimes it's nice. I mean, I've had a problem with games where it won't even capture my mouse at all, and like it just, I can't play the game because it won't capture my mouse. And uh, as everybody knows, playing games in Wine is hit or miss. But uh, most applications that you'll run, as long as they don't require a heavy heavy comp compositing and that sort of thing, will run quite well. I've been able to get, uh, like I said, all of my uh, major uh, editing applications working 
But the thing is, I still can't get any of my video editors to work. Any of my, you know, my nonlinear editing systems. I use uh, Sony Vegas uh, when I was in Windows, and I just can't get that running in Linux to save my life. Yeah, and that's with software and wine. It's kind of a, sometimes it's kind of a 50-50 chance. It'll work or it won't, so you kind of have to, it's, wine isn't always reliable. It's not really something you can pretend, uh put your life on but it can help out in some ways well with the given given with the progress that i have just that i have seen in the past year with wine um i've seen a lot of really really good improvements and what do you guys think of what what do you think wine will be capable of in the next say five years uh Wine might be, it's, wine is still on a steady development, so it's kind of hard to tell where it's actually going right now, but it has gotten better because in the beginning of wine, it was pretty, uh, it was different uh, because most applications when wine was first around didn't always work and they always had a list of which applications could run. But at this point with wine, wine has gotten to that point where it can start running applications kind of out of the box that aren't, that have not been identified. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I'm willing to bet in the next five years, though, that wine will pretty much be able to run just about anything. Because, I mean, I tried it five years ago, and I couldn't get it to run hardly anything. And now I'm getting so many applications running. It, it, it never ceases to amaze me what I can and what I can, can't can get running. So uh, uh, I wouldn't be surprised in the next five years if uh, we can see uh, full uh, software support, at least for the modern applications we have running today. What do you guys feel about that? Um, I, I heard one guy, um, he, I think he, he thinks that some uh, developers might be putting in compatibility for Wine in their applications because um, stuff like Skyrim now works out of the box on Wine, so that, that could be a possibility that people might be working in um, compatibility. Well, um, I think what would be pretty cool is that I would like, um, this is referring to, uh, what I would like to see from uh, Wine for the next five years is how um, it would be pretty cool if they can, they can make it where DirectX 10 games will be able to be supported. I think that might be on the roadmap one of these days. Just think. Um, like, just think somebody be playing Modern Modern Warfare 2 um, on on Linux or something like that in Dread in Dread Dex 10. Yeah, well, the thing is, uh, the sky's the limit. These guys that are putting together uh, Wine and uh, keeping it updated, uh, the people over at Crossover who are contributing the code, these guys are brilliant people, and they're doing a magnificent job. And I cannot sing them enough praises for what they have given, uh, what they've literally given to the Linux community over the years. Uh, Wine is definitely a wonderful way to go if you want to try and get your uh, Windows applications and games running. But if you cannot get those games running natively, you can always dual boot as an option. Or you can also try running a virtual machine. And that's something that I do since I no longer have a... Uh, partition on my hard drive for Windows. Uh, I've grown to love Linux so much that I've just decided to get rid of uh, Windows altogether. But I do have a virtual machine just in case there's that one or two little naughty applications that I can't get running. Or you could go out and tell the uh, developers about the problem and they'll get it fixed. If there's enough demand for it, Yes, I imagine they would be able to work to work on that issue. Um, there's still a long way to go on that, you know, and uh, who knows, maybe someday, you know, uh, after I've had an opportunity to dabble in Linux a little bit more, because I still consider myself to be somewhat of a newbie. You know, I haven't gotten into programming and that sort of thing. I would eventually like to be able to look at code and see if there's ways I can make changes. You don't have to know how to... Uh... Program. I know a, a guy who's a sysadmin. He's been sysadmin for years. He he doesn't know how to program. Interesting. Well, it's a lot of food of thought 
for us for us here on uh, the Couple Linux show. And uh, I'd like to thank everybody for participating in our discussion. And uh, if you thought this information was useful, please hit like and subscribe. Leave a comment below. Uh, we'd definitely like to see your views on this. And uh, if you'd like to participate in one of these discussions, please check the show notes below. There will be a link to TeamSpeak where you can speak with me and you can speak with everybody that's on my panel. These are all regulars that come in from time to time. I'd like to thank you for listening in, and we'll see you next time.